All right. Welcome back to the Boardrill Podcast. As always, I'm Kyle, your host. Here, my co-host, Matt. And Matt, today, we're, we're in football season, right? The Hall of Fame game happened last week, last Thursday. I, I know it's preseason. I know there's not a whole lot to talk about yet, but we're going to find something to talk about today. And uh, the first couple of things we're going to talk about here is, Matt, who are you excited in the NFL? Can you give me three teams that you're excited about watching their offense this year and, and how that unfolds? Well, absolutely, Kyle. Um, you know, I, I have to start with the Homer team, uh, my, my Miami Dolphins, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, seeing how they progress, you know, last year it was this invention of this, um, new motion, um, that kind of broke everything open, really broke open the dig routes for Tyreek Hill. Um, and they were able to use that as well to get running backs out in space, um, uncovered. So, um, you know, what's what's going to be that next thing from Mike McDaniel, the next innovation for the Miami Dolphins to use all this speed that they keep bringing in? Now with the addition of another uh, speedy young running back and Odell Beckham, what, what's the impacts there? They've shored up the tie, tight end room. Um, you know, you'd like to see more improvement on the O-line from them, but um, I think they've definitely made uh, some interesting moves in the offseason and setting themselves up for something. So I'm interested to see what Coach McDaniel does. Um, I think they got to take the next, next team, step, right? Right? They got to they gotta gotta win take the next step. Games. You got you to gotta win a playoff game. Win a playoff game. Yep. Uh, next team would be the Philadelphia Eagles for me. Uh, Kellen Moore coming into Philadelphia is going to change how Jalen Hurts plays. Um, I think he's going to keep Jalen Hurts in the pocket. You're going to see Hurts running a lot less um, so that he doesn't get hurt. Um, so I think you're going to see Kellen Moore take a lot of what they did with Dak Prescott in Dallas and apply that to Philadelphia and apply it into a similar skill set quarterback in um, Jalen Hurts. And then how does the addition of Saquon Barkley, does Barkley still have the, yeah. the juice left to uh, be, a, be a big time contributor to that team? Um, could make that offense very formidable. Um, and then I was kind of, for the third one, I was on the fence between the Texans, the Ravens. Ultimately here, I'm going to have to go with the Texans is the most interesting to me. Uh, you know, obviously a, an incredible rookie year that's going to be hard to replicate for C.J. Stroud. Uh, but the Texans were aggressive. They went out, they got Stephon Diggs, they got Joe Mixon. They added athletes there to that to that offensive attack um, that are going to make it very difficult for defenses to cover. And if, if CJ Stroud can do 90% of what he did last year, um, I, I see them making a, a run into the playoffs with just based on their offense. Yeah. I mean, you know, it'll be good to see the Texans finish second, um, you know, cause go Jags. So, <laughs> Um, so look, my, you know, on the flip side, my top three NFL defenses, and this is again, you know, like Matt said, this is a personal thing that we want to look at. Look, my first one's a homer pick too. It's the Jags, right? Brand new DC, uh, Nilsson. He's coming over from the Falcons. I'm excited to see the transition from, you know, I've always said three down and four down. There's not a whole lot of difference, but there is a little bit. And the first thing is like, I never want to see Trayvon Walker or Josh Allen drop into coverage again, right? Like we'll cut those bad boys loose and let them chase the quarterback. So Excited to see some more four down stuff at Jacksonville, you know, see what that turns into. I think there's some talent on that Jacksonville D line, um, adding the Rick Armstead guy from the 49ers, along with what I thought was a pretty good defensive line. We'll see where they go from here. So hopefully that's an upswing there uh, being a homer, right? My next one is the Chargers, right? They add Jesse Minter from Michigan. Obviously the Michigan defense was outstanding last year at the college level. See what he does with Harbor, Har Har Harbaugh there um, with the Chargers, right? He's got pieces. He's got a Bosa brother. He's got Derwin James. He's got these guys that he can play with and do some creative things. And, and that's what he's known for, right? Finding creative ways to bring five and, and play like the trap two or the cover four, uh, what we call spot coverage where it's two under four deep, uh, but it's more of a cover four look. So really excited to see that. Um, and then my third one really along the same lines, it's a little redundant, but uh, you know, it's, it's McDonald over there in this, in the Seahawks, you know, kind of same style stuff, right? He's a Michigan guy as well. But he's so creative with his blitzes and packages and everything that he does. And I'm excited to see what he does with that Seahawks talent, especially in the back end. They are young and they're they're pretty darn good there. So those are my three NFL defenses I'm excited to watch. Again, doesn't mean that there aren't other exciting defenses. We could get six games in and I'm like, oh, my God, let's check out this defense. So 
that's who I'm excited for. Let's let's transition let's, to college football real quick. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No. Let's go ahead. <laughs> All right, transition to college. Who are the three college offenses that you're excited to look at? All right, so, I mean, there's a lot of movement always in college football, so it's hard to keep up. One of the schools didn't have much movement at all, and that's Kansas. Um, Kansas is always putting out interesting sets, um, and, and they find ways to use all these personnel sets to get these big bodies on the field, and and really use a lot of misdirection. And to me, that's fun to watch. It's fun to see. It's not fun for my favorite team to play them uh, when they're doing it well and when they're executing well. Uh, Kansas becomes uh, very difficult to stop. Yeah. Um, you know, Jeff Grimes is the offensive coordinator, someone I've followed a long, long time when he back to when he was at Auburn with Gus and, and really got to read into his material. Yeah. Um, I'd say next would be Mississippi State with Jeff Levy going over from, um, where's he at? Oklahoma. Is that old? Was he at Ole Miss? No, no he went to Oklahoma. I don't know. He's bounced around, but Levy, yeah, he's a, a favorite around. of ours from UCF. But so, yeah. yeah, Jeff Levy <laughs> making the move to Mississippi State. Um, running that, he, he's always going to be in that real wide sprint down the field scheme, uh, vertical choice stuff. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how. He, that plays in at Mississippi State and how, how what he's able to do in one year there. Um, you know, a traditional, you know, you go back into what they've been doing before, uh, air raid style thing that maybe he can tap into that really quick. Um, and then the last one would be North Carolina State, mainly because of the quarterback they pulled in. Um, always enjoyed watching Grayson McCall at Coastal Carolina and thought that he was really good in that <laughs> option scheme they ran there. And I'm, I'm hoping that we're going to see a return of that. And uh, we're going to be able to see some fun stuff from uh, NC State this year using Grayson McCall in that manner. I feel last year, really, Grayson McCall didn't get used in the proper form. So it'll be really interesting to see what NC State does there. <clears throat> yeah. So on the flip side, you know, one, one team that I, I just love to watch their defense and they hadn't been very good, but maybe they got their quarterback now, but Nebraska. Right, they they run a version of three high, but they're very multiple with it. Every game they played really good defense. You know, now listen, I'm not saying they didn't give up points. Right, they played good defense. Their offense wasn't good. They gave up a bunch of points, but they're a team that was really fun to watch schematically defensively. And I think that they're still going to be a pretty darn good defense. Let's see where they're at now that they have the uh, the young kid. I forget it, the Riola kid. You know, maybe the offense picks mm-hmm. up and you see a little more out of Nebraska this year. Um, I'm certainly always going to be rooting for him from my time living in Nebraska. So, you know, it's, it's one of those like off teams that you have that you're like, yeah, I always root for those guys. Cause I lived there for a little bit. So my next one's Wyoming, right? We've written an article on them. They're fun to watch. Uh, I'm curious to see where they go this year, right? Their DC is now their head coach. Uh, so I'm curious to see if they change a little bit. If they stay, they were high cover one team, but then in the Texas game, right, they whipped out all these different coverages and zone pressures and everything. So I'm, I'm excited to see where they kind of morph into following the this uh, this next year. Look, my third one, I'm going to keep on my Homer theme. and it, It's Florida State. I, I thought at the end of last year, and I truly thought this, whether you think they belonged in the playoffs, this or that, I really don't care. Their defense was very darn good in the end of last year. Their D-line was completely dominant. And the last two games, the crazy stat was they held two consecutive teams at negative yards in the fourth quarter which is a wild stat. Apparently it had never been done. So curious to see with losing Jared verse um, with losing, uh, God, I can't think of his now the, the D tackle as well to the Rams. Uh, what is his name? I don't know. I love that guy, uh, but losing those two players, right. They replace it. Uh, they have uh, a young D end that's coming back. Uh, they had Marvin Jones jr. From Georgia. So I'm really curious to see. They added a really good linebacker from Auburn. So, you know, there's typical Mike Norvell fashion, right? Hit the transfer portal. I'm excited to see where that is. Um, also, I'm just a diehard Noel, so it'll be fun to watch. Um, and we'll be breaking those guys down weekly, as as I'm sure uh, Matt will be breaking down UCF. So, perfect. Lots, so, lots of Homer <laughs> picks here from Kyle yeah. today. Look, I it, listen, I don't hide it. I'm a, I'm a diehard Jag and, and Florida State guy. I'm going to watch them a lot, and I, I love them to death. So, all right, Matt the big thing, right. That we saw the other night, the new kickoff. All right. People have probably talked it to death. We're going to talk about it a little bit, but let's put a spin on it. So we got this new kickoff right there. They're set five yards apart. There's this kickoff and a kick zone that it has to be in. 
and it's really more of a set piece than it's ever been, right? It's almost like an offensive play now. It's a little different, right? Like the ball's way further back and everything. So my thought process was this. I'm going to ask you, you're the O-line guy. Do you think it's possible to run actual run schemes in kick return now? You know, like, can you run power counter, things like that? You know, is that possible? I mean, I think that there's a lot to tackle here. When you look at the act- how it went down the other night, yeah. and that first kickoff, I mean, there, one guy got a jump on the first one. He was he yeah. jumped early. The refs didn't notice. That's <laughs> going to be a mess throughout the year. And the defender in front of him wasn't ready because they're trying to peek back and see when the ball's caught. So I think a lot of the establishment from teams is going to be, are you going to are you going to have your guys try to turn and see the ball caught? and then go, or are you going to react to the other team like you're a defensive player? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's going to matter in how you execute your scheme. As far as running run-style plays, I don't see why you couldn't do a two-man trap game um, up front where you're just crossing two guys and trying to hit a seam on a team. Yeah. Um, you know, you're going to have guys that you go against that are going to sprint up field. You know, who are those guys, and, and how can we take advantage of that? Um you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say, I'd say that even something like a GT scheme wouldn't yeah. be, you know, completely out of the ordinary. Um, especially if you could have, you know, uh, one of the guy catch it and give a little read to it, you know? So, yeah. you know, I, that, that may take too much time. Um, a lot of it's going to be on these NFL teams experimenting and getting out. I don't think we're going to see it till the regular season. No, um, no, we're not getting any of that man to man and maybe but, a few couple games. I think we'll start to see some two man X schemes like you'd run on the old, you know, the old um, belly ice play and in, uh, in the wing T and um, trying to find ways to catch a seam. I mean, somebody's going to try it. Yeah. I think what came to mind um, is a play that's become a lot more popular lately. It's called crunch hardball and them run it, but you see where everybody on the line basically runs trap. So I was curious. I was like, I wonder if you could just run crunch all the way across and see if like one gap pops and the guy reads it. I, you know, the answer is I don't know, because right there a lot further back than crunch would actually hit, you know, and if you're pulling right, like think about it. If, if you try to pull a guy too far, well, if a guy's sprinting full speed, he's never going to catch him. Right. So it's what athletes do you have in what spot, what they're capable of doing. I'm really curious about it. I think special teams guys will be really experimental with it. And we haven't even really delved into the fact of like, reverses throwbacks like are those still legal i'm not even really sure of all the rules yet like i know basically you have nine guys for the receiving team up front 10 guys for the kicking team but like are they allowed to flex a little bit like how far can they flex what's going on because right there's no threat of an onside kick anymore you have to declare it and it's got to be in the fourth quarter so i wonder how much people push those rules and change it i'm super curious about it i have no idea You know, maybe we should just do an article on it. Maybe I'm going to write an article on uh, how I can, you know, in theory, apply running schemes to kick return. And since I'm not an offensive guy, it'll probably be a pretty pathetic article. But I'm going to try it. Let's try it. I'll I'll do it. We'll release it next week or later on this week. So Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. (laughs) If you try to pull everybody and you have one lead blocker out in front, maybe you can maybe you can, you know, find somebody crossing over to the wrong gap. Um, it's just going to make defenses or the, the return team or the kickoff teams stay gap sound and um, <laughs> not try to get out of place. So I, I could see some guys false pulling stuff, trying to <laughs> throw teams off. Um, yeah. Who knows? I, I think, I think reverses are very risky with how close the kickoff team is. That's uh maybe a throwback though, right? Like flow all tough. the way, leave that guy sitting over there and throw, you know, like old Titans play. Right. And try that. That, that sounds yeah. risky. Someone's going to do it. Look, somebody's going to do it, and, and maybe they're going to do it in a game where they're like maybe just getting killed, and they're like, screw it. Let's just test this out. Let's test the water and throw it back across. Like, hey, we're down 22 in the fourth quarter. Like, screw it. I'm curious, yeah. you know. So, but if, you're a, <laughs> but if you're a team that has a couple real speedsters on yeah. your team, some guys that just fly down the field, you know. Right, um, like the Chiefs are going to do dis- this, right? This seems like an Andy Reid thing. Yeah. They're going to throw it back to Xavier Worthy. And yeah. he's gonna right. He's gonna take off with this four two speed or the Dolphins. You know, it's gonna be one of those teams, right? Like, yeah. let's just throw it to a super athletic guy and see what happens. You know, and if not, yeah. who cares? Yeah. We have Patrick Mahomes only just ninety yards to throw a touchdown anyway. So. <laughs> I just want to know how Devin Hester would do in this. You know, you 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 wish you could see. Hey, what would what would Devin Hester be able to do in in this yeah. situation? 
is an advantage I, I, or disadvantage. Yeah, right. It's still kind of similar. It's a little different, right? Because it's not still quite not a punt. You know, I returned punts, and the one thing I liked about punts were guys came in waves, right? You didn't just get 10 guys bolt. You know, I hated returning kickoffs. I did it like twice in my career. I was like, I'm, I'm good. Stick, stick to the punts. Because everyone comes down on like one wave, and you're really just sprinting and hope that, that something creases, right? And in my, you know, experience, if it doesn't crease, sometimes you just get leveled. It sucks. So I, you know, and that was 20 something years ago and I suck. So who cares? But, you know, I think it's a, it's like you said, it's, it's a really cool thing. It's not quite a punt now. It's not quite a normal kickoff. It's somewhere in the gray area, but you can play some new tricks, I think. And I think whoever figures out the tricks quicker is going to be more successful. And then everyone's going to copy it because the NFL, right? They're going, oh, that looks really good. Let's do it. So (laughs) so the next step would then. How long till this goes to college? How long till it trickles down to high school next year? You know, what's the next, what's the next, what's the progression there that high school coaches are going to have to be able to be watching this and learning as they go to be ready to apply it to their own game. Yeah. I think the first part is exactly what you said. If if you're a high school or college coach, you need to be paying attention to this because it's, it's coming because they've, they've deemed it as a safety thing. They're going to have whatever stat they want to back it up. Whether you believe in it or not, I don't really care. There's going to be a stat that came out like, right, concussions are down 23% on kickoffs or this is down or that's down. And then college is going to say, okay, cool. We have a new thing that we can wave the safety banner with, right? And we're going to implement, right? Just like the drop, hip, drop, tackle, and all that other crap. So once it goes to college, it's only a matter of time before it goes to high school, right? That's, That's just how rules work. And so I would think it's coming in the next couple of years. I would say five years at the max. It's going to be in the high school level. Look, am I certain of that? No, but I just assume that'll happen. Um, so coaches just, you know, it's, it's probably something where you want to start collecting cut-ups now, you know, so we'll, we'll do that, Matt. I think it'd be cool throughout the preseason. Let's collect all the cut-ups preseason and then do the cut-ups through the first four weeks. And let's see how it changes throughout the NFL. That'll be a really cool thing there. So Yeah, I think you're going to see some change there as it, as it goes. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's an evolving thing. So I'm excited to see it. I think special teams coaches, maybe they're a little refreshed now, right? Something new that they get the scheme. I don't know. Maybe they're more stressed. I can't do what I've been doing for 20 years. So, you know, and so there's another thing, Matt, right? Here's the other thing. Watch preseason games. I know they're very vanilla. But, man, how many times I still see in the NFL, even in regular season games, that country cover three and – just them struggle right like because as soon as they see it the offense comes out and runs four verticals and you just the other night in the bears texans games these backup quarterbacks are just annihilating the seams and so you know what is the thought process behind that like you know i've talked to people about it and they're like you know well in the nfl they want it simple they want it plug and play you know and let the athletes be the athletes but at some point right like the athletes are going to be the athletes on offense and they're not stupid they just find the hole when a linebacker staring at the quarterback Travis Kelsey's smart enough to slide left and right. So, like, you know, what's your thought process on this as an offensive guy? As a defensive guy, I hate it, you know, and I just it seems to never want to go away. I, I think you see a similar thing from the offensive side in the NFL. Um, there's a certain enough uh, amount of blandness to it. Uh, mm-hmm. I think teams get really interesting down when they get in the red zone, when they get at the goal line situation. But beyond that, you're going to watch a team run split zone or stretch all the way down the field uh, in the run game, mostly stretch. And, um, you know, stretch is the go-to play in the NFL because of the athletes you have up front, and you're trying to force those defensive linemen to play laterally instead of getting vertically up the field. Yeah. Um, you know, you wish you'd see a little bit more variety from these offenses, but, um, yeah, you know, I think it's the same thing. It's, it's a comfortableness. But... <laughs> it's, it's comfortability. I mean, even at the college level, you know, watching UCF's offense last year, who is, you know, Gus has traditionally put out a very interesting offense. I mean, they were, they were split zone and they were GT. Yeah. That was, that was it. And, and there wasn't much variety from that. Yeah. That's just, you know, I, it, maybe it's just me just finding something to complain about, but man, I, I feel like I need to see some more, right? Like progression, you know, it's like, can we just put country cover three to bed and run some more match schemes and things like that? But Hey, it is what well, it is. Yeah. Why a team would sit and cover three. I don't know. No, it seems it like, seems the, like offenses favorite have that one figured out. Like every, every offensive coach has an answer for cover three. So I'm with you. Perfect. So, 
Anyways, hey guys, you know, look, I, we want to do a quick episode this week. Uh, we don't quite have all the football content we want yet, but we want to keep producing and kicking things out for you guys. So, uh, Matt, any other closing words on the few things we talked about? You know, we're excited for the football season to start. It's coming. We're on the edge of our seat. We're just waiting for the content so we can break it down for you guys. Let's get this season rolling, man. Absolutely. And like we said, just tune in to all of our stuff, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcast on YouTube. Also follow our sub stack. That's on www.boarddrill.com. Uh, we're going to be writing all year long. Matt's going to be kicking out off, uh, offensive articles. I'm going to be kicking out defensive articles, breaking down NFL college teams. Coaches, we're here for you. If you're interested in us breaking down something, send it our way and we'll do it. Uh, for me and Matt and the Board Drill, signing off. Have a great day. <laughs>